look into this important conceptual diagram where a membrane is connected to a voltmeter and inside you are seeing negative charges. These are all the broad themes we are going to discuss under this section. What will happen when you collect, connect it to a voltmeter? Why there is negativity inside the cell? This topic discussion is totally about the potentials seen across the cell membrane. So the topic of interest is membrane potentials. And what are the important potentials we need to understand here, sir? First and foremost is something called as RM. What does RMP stands for? Is it reg registered medical practitioner? No. Here in our discussion, P is the potential. And what is this first potential we are going to discuss? It is our very well known resting membrane potential. That means even at rest, there is a potential showing here. And second important potential we are going to discuss here is called as equilibrium potential. What is the meaning of this equilibrium potential? We will discuss two broad areas. Resting membrane potential, equilibrium potential. That's all. Let's approach one by one. Now look into this neuronal cell. As we have seen in the previous diagram also, the inside is always negative. The inside of any cell is always negative. This inside negativity is our resting membrane potential. They will definitely ask you, what is the cause of this resting membrane potential? If it is negative means, we have connected to a voltmeter, right? What value it will show? Particularly for a neuron, remember guys, this resting membrane potential obviously is a negative value. So the minus sign, it is going to be minus 70 millivolt. The resting membrane potential of a neuron is minus 70 millivolt. What is the cause for this resting membrane potential? Conceptual understanding. Look very carefully. Consider this cell, neuronal cell for that matter. We all know inside the concentration of potassium ions are always more. Potassium is dominant intracellular. On the other hand, if you look out, the potassium is very, very low. So what is the concentration here? Inside concentration of potassium is more, outside concentration is less or low. We have discussed in the membrane transport processes, there is a transport process where substance move from high concentration to low concentration. And what is this transport processor? We all know it is the simple diffusion of which important ions here? Potassium ions. That means this process that happens at rest. This cell is not stimulated. It is happening at rest. Even at rest, there is diffusion of potassium ions moving from inside to outside. There is no need of ATP for this process. That is why it is considered to be a passive process. So the most important logic. Potassium once moving out, it is carrying lot of positive charges outside. Because lot of positive charges are moving out, the negativity accumulates inside. That's all. There is inside negativity. Why? What is the reason? Very simple, I told you. Because lot of positive charges are moving out. Negativity is not getting neutralized. Negative charges accumulate inside. This inside negativity is my resting membrane potential. First question. In a neuron, we all know this value is minus 70 millivolt. The basic cause for resting membrane potential is a passive diffusion of potassium ions. Inside negativity accumulate resting membrane potential. What is the other name for this resting membrane potential? It is exclusively because of diffusion of potassium. That is why it can be also called as diffusion potential. Simple. Resting membrane potential is also called as diffusion potential. Diffusion of which important ions? Potassium ions. Now look into this concept. Diffusion potential is the other name. What three important things are going to determine our diffusion potential? There are three important things. First one is obviously the concept of charge. 
what is the charge concept potassium is positive potassium is moving out that is why negativity accumulates inside simple it depends upon the charge that is the charge of potassium positive moving out negativity accumulating inside what about the second one sir it is permeability what is the meaning of the concept of permeability here even at rest remember guys cell is permeable to potassium even at rest it is not stimulated even at rest the cell is permeable to potassium so this resting permeability determines diffusion potential and finally we all know extremely important concentration gradient we discussed so many times in simple diffusion we always require concentration gradient potassium is moving from inside to outside diffusion process so what are all the three determinants of this diffusion potential the first one is the charge the second one is the permeability of potassium at rest and the third one is the concentration gradient now with this idea let's move further resting membrane potential values asked many times before as i told you remember this important table first and foremost if they ask you for a neuron it is a negative value minus 70 millivolt we discussed this with the help of a diagram we saw inside negativity second commonest location they will ask you is this muscle what is that muscle skeletal muscle its value is minus 90 millivolt and third they will ask you particularly in the heart what is this location sir cardiac ventricles in the heart the same value minus 90 millivolt asked many times before for a neuron minus 70 skeletal muscle and cardiac ventricle minus 90 neuron is minus 70 skeletal muscle and cardiac ventricles minus 90 now let me write the value here look very carefully minus 60 millivolt to minus 40 millivolt i'm writing minus 60 millivolt to minus 40 millivolt there are three important location where you see this value first point what comes in your mind these three are considered to be a stable value a single value but here it is oscillating look very carefully it is oscillating between two values minus 60 to minus 40 that means it is unstable this unstable resting membrane potential for conceptual understanding we can call this as restless membrane potential it is not a stable value it is not a single value it is oscillating restless membrane potential it is unstable classically this restless membrane potential you always see in pacemakers now exclusively first the pacemaker for our heart s a node all the pacemakers will have restless membrane potential oscillating between minus 60 to minus 40. second one the pacemaker that is found in gi tract we call them as causal cells or cajal cells Cogel cells, interstitial cells of cogel. And finally, exclusively for respiration, there is a need for a pacemaker neuron. Any idea? What is the name of that pacemaker neuron for respiration? Yes, I am hearing it from you correctly. That is called pre botzinger complex. This is the pacemaker neuron for respiration. You will see this exclusively in the medulla region. In respiratory physiology, we will discuss just introducing the name pre Botzinger complex for our respiration. It is the important pacemaker cell for respiration, pre Botzinger complex. All the pacemaker cells will have restless membrane potential that oscillates between minus 60 to minus 40 millivolt. A very important table. Now we know the resting membrane potential and restless membrane potential values. Now look very carefully, guys contributions to this resting membrane potential the most important dominant contributor first and foremost is potassium ions we know it is the diffusion of potassium ions 
This alone contributes to around minus 86 millivolt. The next important contribution while discussing primary active transport I told you. Sodium potassium pump contributes a very minor value to RMP. Do you remember that value I told you? Around 4 millivolt. Yes, sodium potassium pump. And very, very, very less contribution. Very, very less contribution by diffusion of, remember guys, sodium ions. Like potassium, there is also a diffusion of sodium, but this is very, 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 very less. Potassium diffusion is more important. Very important concept. The major dominant contributor is diffusion of potassium minus 86. Second, sodium potassium pump around minus 4. Very, very, very less contribution diffusion of sodium. So, the diffusion of potassium is the dominant contributor for our resting membrane potential. Alright guys, now the clinical importance of resting membrane potential. Look carefully on this important cell. What actually happened here? This is the extracellular location. Here the potassium becomes more. We are clearly seeing there is more potassium outside. This is what we classically see in the form of hyperkalemia. Hyper. Potassium is more outside. One classical example. Remember guys, rhabdomyo lysis muscle cells breakdown potassium is coming out more potassium outside hyperkalemia what will happen the normal diffusion process will be hampered here remember the normal diffusion process will be hampered what is the meaning sir because already there is more potassium outside the concentration gradient is abolished that means the diffusion will be hampered all the potassium ions will stay inside. Potassium is positive. That means this inside is becoming positive now. What is this positivity means? Inside positivity always means depolarization. That means this cell or the membrane becomes more excitable now. This is the concept. Hyperkalemia is the scenario. Rhabdomyolysis. The normal diffusion gradient is abolished because there is more potassium outside. Diffusion is hampered. Potassiums tend to stay inside. It is positive. Inside positivity means depolarization. All the cell that is depolarized, they become more excitable. Now, you will be able to answer this question correctly now. What is the opposite of hyperkalemia? Now, here in this, the extracellular location of potassium is low here. What we call this state as hypokalemia. This hypokalemia, the diffusion is enhanced. Because inside there is more, outside there is very less. This process is enhanced. That means, Remember guys, more potassium will now move out. That means the inside of the cell becomes more negative. Yes, you answered before me correctly. Because there is enhanced diffusion of potassium, more positivity going outside. The inside becomes more negative. We call this important state as hyperpolarization. The inside becomes more negative means hyperpolarization. Any cell that is undergoing hyperpolarization means they become less excitable. That's all. So, first we have discussed hyperkalemia. The cell is more excitable because of depolarization. Now, we are discussing hypokalemia. Underline hypokalemia. The cell is less excitable here because of hyperpolarization. Remember this, it was recently asked in a neat PGMCQ. Potassium changes affect your resting membrane potential. 